Hi everyone, welcome back to another discussion video about Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires. Today we're going to be covering another segment of the Warriors of Chaos. I did a video specifically speaking about the tech tree of the Warriors of Chaos, and I am following that guide that I made uh, in this particular campaign. I have gone up through Corn, gotten both Corn gifts, and now I'm coming back down through going through Nurgle. So that's about where we are. We're on turn 43. And what I wanted to talk about in today's video was how to manage your Gifts of Chaos and set up your army in a way that it can continuously advance and take advantage of those gifts. So I think that there are really, there's a dilemma on which way you should go to head up your army. Here I have a basic army. This army started, it was recruited over here, it walked over and took Winterpire, and now it is uh, besieging the Altar of Spawns. So it is not unrealistic to get uh, several aspiring champions just from Warband recruitment, but for the most part, you're getting trash. And you can see that I've got these here. These Marauders will probably stick around and be upgraded to Chosen. These ones will eventually become uh, Chaos Knights, probably of Slanesh. Uh, this is trash. These are just here for a siege attacker. In fact, uh, are these not ready to be upgraded yet? But basically, the dilemma is this. Do you run a Chaos Lord or do you run a Sorcerer? And I think on the outset of the campaign, when you first start, your first lord that you recruit should probably be a sorcerer lord. But after that, I think that you trade that person out for the dedicated lord of corn. And let me explain. If we go through the corn line, through our gifts here, you can see that we get one gift there, and then we get another gift after we complete this line right here. So the two gifts that I'm running for corn are as follows. The Death's Bounty and the Annihilator Armor. So here's the thing about Death's Bounty. If we look, income from post-battle loot, 35%. Income from raising settlements, 35%. You're going to put this on and basically leave it for the entire campaign. I can't think of a scenario where you wouldn't want an extra 35% from everything that you do. This one is questionable, and I think that... The reason I'm running this one is because I've chosen to run the dedicated Lord of Corn, and what it does is it gives us 10 armor for every unit in every army led by a corn devoted character, and we can get 25% on that corn lord for their experience. I think that's pretty valuable. And ultimately, this person is going to become a demon prince anyway. And the, the reason I think that you go with this is not only will he become a demon prince, but I feel like the melee lords are more valuable because basically, if you look at any of your settlements, you're going to end up with limitless sorcerer heroes. And what I mean by that is if you look at, let's just pick a random settlement. Uh, well, actually, that's not a, this one, for instance. You're going to build this building because fully upgrade is going to give you an extra 50% on your income. But every single time you build this, you get an extra sorcerer hero. And they're, the sorcerer heroes aren't that much worse than a sorcerer lord. Now, if we go back to this army here. Blood for the blood again, this guy is a dedicated lord of corn. This one is going to become probably a lord of Sinch after I get to the next level. So right now he doesn't have any any spells online or anything. We're just trying to push to Siench because I feel like there's a lot of utility in the Siench uh, lore over the lore of fire. Being that almost all of your units as Warriors of Chaos are melee units, I think using this, especially where you're concentrating force to be able to break through that line in a timely manner, I think this might be the thing. I know that there are some missile units in Warriors of Chaos, but the Marauder Horsemen, they really don't last past even the early game. Like, once you get to mid-game, they're basically out. You're looking to upgrade those to Chaos Knights as quickly as possible. 
so using this in tandem with concentration of force, I think can do some real good work with breaking that line. And that's my case for hiring Excellent. melee lords instead of sorcerer lords for Warriors of Chaos.